The trial on whether to kick former President Donald Trump off the ballot in Colorado began today. If Trump loses, it'll immediately be appealed, eventually to the U.S. Supreme Court. If he wins, the arguments his attorneys are making could come back to haunt Colorado's Republican Party, which is in pretty spooky shape anyway. Here's politics guy Marshall Zellinger. In a way, it's like watching the January 6th committee all over again. That is Officer Hodges, who you'll hear from shortly. Instead of a congressional hearing room in the U.S. Capitol, January 6th is on trial in a Denver courtroom. We ask after this hearing that this court find Trump is an ineligible candidate. Eric Olson is one of the attorneys representing six Colorado voters, four Republican, two unaffiliated, trying to keep Trump off the presidential ballot in Colorado next year using Section 3 of the 14th Amendment ratified 155 years ago, that if you engage in an insurrection after having sworn an oath to uphold the Constitution, you shall not hold any office, which would include being a candidate for a future office. At the time of passage, 1868, engaging in insurrection included words of incitement or specific words of encouragement. That's what Trump did here. Using Trump's own words and testimony from two officers injured at the Capitol on January 6th, the case began today by trying to prove to a court that Trump engaged in insurrection, thus allowing him to be disqualified from running for office. This is their effort to get court to endorse the January 6th report. That's what it comes down to. Former Republican Colorado Secretary of State Scott Gessler is one of Trump's attorneys who argued that the January 6th report was produced to get a desired outcome and should be seen as one-sided. He also argued that voters should not be limited on who appears on their ballot. This lawsuit is anti-democratic. It looks to extinguish the opportunity, extinguish it, the opportunity for millions of Coloradans Colorado Republicans and unaffiliated voters to be able to choose and vote for the presidential candidate they want. But that argument is a bit at odds with the recent actions of the Colorado GOP. Chairman Dave Williams has twice tried and failed to change the party rules to limit who can vote in choosing Republican candidates. This case is about who can be a candidate. This court should not interfere with that fundamental value, that rule of democracy. It's the people who get to decide. The bulk of this case will be a history lesson on the 14th Amendment. What was intended in 1868, how has it been used, and should it be used that way now? Multi-pronged, Kyle. Uh, was Trump responsible for engaging in insurrection, number one? Yeah. And then if the answer is yes to that, does it apply in the way the 14th Amendment should be interpreted? Why here? Why are we doing this here? Yeah, I asked that question when we covered this a couple months ago. Like, what, like there, why not Georgia? Why not Pennsylvania? Yeah. Why, because what you're seeing right now, it's already, the trial has begun because it's fast in Colorado. You can get it into the district court right away. You can get it heard before the deadlines. There's a deadline of January 5th before Colorado's ballot has to be certified. So you need a decision by then to know whether or not you can print Trump's name on the ballot. So even if they think that they're going to take an L from a Democrat appointed judge and lose at the appeals level, a fast L is good because it gets you to the Supreme Court. Right, but I don't know the last case that has ever moved that swiftly yeah. from like the district court to the Supreme Court. All right, Marshall, thank you.